All right, I've clicked record. We're back for another episode of The Debrief. You know who I am. I'm Tyler. And you know who that is. It's John Bergman. He writes for Climbing Magazine about the comps. He writes for Climbing Business Journal. Actually, he's doing a bunch of their uh, their podcasts over at CBJ as well, which you should check out. I've got the uh, the one with the um, the lawyer guy. You know, the lawyer guy. Everybody likes Climbing Gym Law. That's that's something I, uh, I've got saved up, queued up for uh, for for my listening coming up. And of course, John wrote the book, High Drama, The Rise, Fall, and Rebirth of American Competition Climbing. Uh, it's pretty late in the week, honestly. We normally get around to this a little bit sooner than this, but they're like it's the technical, like literally, I think actually, yeah, I think it's over. The technical meeting for uh, Brixen has finished <laughs> already. So like qualifiers are, are going to start just tomorrow. Um, yeah, how you doing, John? Do you remember anything I, that happened I'm in Prague? good. I was going to ask if you, how do you feel about these back-to-back world cup when you have one and then the weekend the next weekend is another world cup do you like that would you do you wish there was a little more time what's your preference i'm okay with like little chunks of like back-to-back world cups if you get like a couple weekends off in between like if we do three and then there's only one weekend off in the middle and then you do three more because like i give up a lot of my like my life to to watch these comps live um i end up waking up really early so that messes with my sleep schedule for the entire weekend because i'm like not disciplined and and i just crawl right back into bed after semifinals and finals and stuff but uh yeah i like having them back to back it keeps the momentum going keeps the story alive but it's just hard on you know my my actual like life just don't have that much time well it it does keep the momentum alive if competitors compete in yeah. one and then com- and then participate in the next one the problem is when they compete in one and then don't show up at the next one which might be something we'll get into today on this uh discussion but i know what you mean it's depressing man yeah um yeah. well uh like we might as well like, just dive right into it but it's, it's nice to catch up with you even though this is kind of like a, a very last minute recording and uh, i'm glad we're doing it um yeah Prague. and actually i'm going to take this opportunity for me to go first with my headline which i never do anymore we always give it to the guests but how can the headline be anybody other than orian berton for this comp like I think it was a cool event where we had a first-time winner in both the men's and the women's category, which is just a, a special fun thing where you get double the dose of somebody who's just, you know, on cloud nine, experiencing a brand new high in their career as a competitor. It just felt so good in both the women's round and the men's round. But for Orien Berton, it felt like she was kind of one of those uh, uh, those winners in waiting, which in the women's side of things it's not a guarantee that you're going to end up with a gold medal, right? Like this isn't something that you can bank on. Look at a bunch of the women in, uh, in finals as well, such as Stasi Geo, um, not so much Futaba, but a little bit Futaba where you say these are, you know, these women must have a chance. They make finals so frequently and there's a very good chance that that gold medal never comes around. Right. So, uh, did you enjoy the, the Orianne story? Like, was that, a, was that a highlight for you? I, w- I was really excited for, her. I, I did really enjoy it. And, uh, you know, along with the great stuff that Mejdi has done this season and the wins that he has had, I, I wrote about this, how all of a sudden this this drought that Fran- Team France seemed to have in previous seasons in terms of top-level like superstars and top-level kind of depth, right? Multiple stars, multiple uh, crushers. It, it seemed like there was almost none, and now it, it feels like France, Team France has just kind of, uh, I don't know, just <laughs> come back in a huge way with, like I said, Mejdi and Orian, and uh, gosh, you also had, you have good stuff from Paul Jempt, you had Fanny just not that long ago doing really well, kind of turning back the clock in a way. Well, you know, I I was making the comparison that like, wow, it's been a really long time since a French woman specifically has won a Boulder gold medal, right? You do have to go back to 2007. So there's like a generation or maybe even two generations of French women that haven't won gold medals. Like uh, Fanny Gibert has not done it and she's been around for a real long time now. Melissa Leneve never made to do it. Cecile Avazu, who's somebody, or Cecile Laflemme, if you want to go super far back, she had two separate generations to her own career, right? She had her time in the 90s, took 10 years off, and then had her time in the 2000s. She never managed to get that gold medal either. So it, it feels very satisfying to see a French woman back on top. But the actual comparison that I think is it like really uh, uh, stands out to me going into Paris is just look at the athletes that France sent to the Tokyo Olympics compared to who we think the favorites are going to be going into Paris, right? The, I'm not going to count Bassam Awam or Anik Joubert because they are 
I think everybody would agree that they are speed specialists, right? So I expect they'll still be in speed. Uh, not Anik, obviously, but I expect Basel will be there for speed. But for the combined athletes, right? It was Mikhail Mauem and Julia Chenardi who were the the, the two best all-rounders that France could put together and both strong athletes. Mikhail has a has an incredibly long career. Julia Chanardi, it was kind of the year of her life that ended up being the Olympic qualifying year. But look at the people that we're talking about for Paris 2024. Like France might have, you know, the Japan problem of shit, we've got like too many good candidates for this. Some people might miss out. Having Mejdi and Oriane is unbelievable. But then, you know, beyond that, if we do see promise from Paul and we do see maybe a really good season from Fanny Gibert, you start saying like, wow, we're going to fill all of our slots with, you know, competitors that make finals regularly. That's crazy. That's such a huge improvement over what we saw in 2020. I, I don't think France is going to be the only nation that has that potential, you know, problem. We'll put it in quotes, right? Having too many people yeah. that can <laughs> make it into the yeah, Olympics. Yeah. Too but successful. I think, you know, I can't help but think of the United States as well with Natalia Grossman, with Brooke Rabitou. Now we've kind of seen Annie Sanders sort of move up into the into the finalist position and, and get better and better this season. I think what's going to be really fascinating about Paris 2024 is I think it's just going to be, by and large, like a whole new generation. And Orion is, is kind of the epitome of this, but it's going to be a whole new generation of of Olympians, of competitors making the Olympics, where I think in 2020 slash 2021, it was, yeah, you had a couple youngsters, you had like Colin Duffy and stuff, but you also had, you know, some of the competitors that had been veterans on the circuit for a long, long time. And I don't know if we're really going to see that in 2024. I think it's going to get harder and harder for these veterans to, who will be even more of a veteran by this point, by 2024, it's going to be harder and harder for them to, you know, out climb somebody like an Orion who just looked so awesome performatively uh, here in Prague. I, you know, I, I, I hesitate a little bit to, to necessarily judge the form of a lot of these climbers going into the world championships, because as somebody that's never been on any kind of periodized training schedule, I'm not going to tell Jakob Schubert, who's done like nearly two decades of, you know, annual cycles for performance rock climbing. I'm not going to tell him when he's supposed to do well or when he's supposed to peak. So for a lot of these climbers, Maybe it turns out that they're nailing the strategy and that they're going to be, you know, through the stratosphere when we get to August and we get to Switzerland for world championships. But I think you're right. Like, for the most part, there's a lot of the women obviously retired after the Olympics and probably would have liked to retire sooner if not for clinging on for that Olympic opportunity. And for the men, not as many retirements. I think we just see fewer retirements from men in general, right? It's uh, it's less of a pressing concern to to give up your work life for maybe other things. But yeah, like, where's Yak? Jacob Schubert been right you know he's been showing up to a, a few events but like you know what's what's going on with those uh, those performances Sean was really frank when he was in the commentary about where his prospects were for qualifying for the Olympics right he said like world championships is probably not my way to get there and he didn't even suggest that the North American qualifier was his opportunity and like when you think about the North American qualifier the you know the Colin Duffy's that that we would think might be the favorite like where have they been so far this season right and still Sean was saying you know I think it's going to be the Olympic qualifier uh, series that's what that is what gets me to uh, the Olympics so a lot of these old guys are are you know their their chances are diminishing as all these uh, younger names come up I think you're absolutely right yeah and and uh, foremost among them we have to talk about Adam Andra because he is kind of in a way, this Prague World Cup and his great performance here, may, he's kind of this anomaly where you, I mean, I remember when we were saying he's a little old <laughs> sure, to, well, when he, he was going for Tokyo, yeah. 20, Tokyo 2020, 2021, you know, Paris, this is going to be three, three, four years later. He's, he's 30 right now. Mm -hmm. So, and he doesn't, he, he's not exactly a mainstay on the comp circuit anymore. And so logic would tell you, yeah, Andre's going to have a real uphill battle if he wants to qualify for 2024. And yet you can kind of also throw all that out the window because here at Prague, he ends up doing great, makes a podium. Yeah, uh, like possibly the greatest climber in history. Like, and, and that's the thing is, you know, because we don't see him so much and because with men's climbing, you can be one of the very best and still not win that many comps. But Adam's just in every freaking finals. Like you can't get this guy out of a boulder finals if he shows up 
it's almost a given. So he's always at the top of the field. I, I keep <laughs> I feel like every time I write about Andre in a finals, I'm like, you know, Andre struggles with these dynamic coordination moves, which he does. And yet somehow, some way he just manages to find ways around him instead of going dynamically. He'll throw up a, a heel hook or something and be able to kind of find some upward uh, reach. I, it's it's incredible how he how he is just able to adapt, even though he's not adapting and becoming more of a dynamic climber, I wouldn't say. He's still able to somehow adapt and find his way onto podi- into finals and onto podiums. It's really he's, something. Yeah, he's a, I, had a, I had a head gardener back when I was working for a, 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 for a kind of a public garden. And uh, this guy had been around forever. He was crusty as hell, but he was in charge of this particular rose garden that I worked in. And there was a day where we had to install, we had to screw this kind of hanger into a beam above us from this trellis. And all he had with him was a hammer and he just hammered that shit, that screw straight in. Obviously, should he use a screwdriver? Should he use a drill? Should he use, you know, a, a, a bolt and a washer? But you just say, you know what? I know how to use this completely opposite set of tools to achieve the same end. That's what I'm comfortable with. That's what I got. So that's what I'm going to do. So he uh, he hammered, uh, Adam Andra can hammer a screw like nobody else, I guess. Um, I want to, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about Orianne because, um, and we'll talk, more about this with the men's, but with the women's round, we saw a lot of tops, particularly between the the women that were competing right at the very top. Um, and I was speaking to people that were coming into the gym over the last uh, week, and and a lot of people surprisingly were like, you know, I really didn't enjoy finals because the boulders weren't hard enough, and it made me kind of realize how different. Uh, the criteria is for people to, I guess, enjoy watching a finals. I had a great time because there was so much, um, uh, of course, the word evades me now, but there was so much at stake, right? It was Yanya finally getting to see her back and a couple other challengers. And we did kind of a quick poll in the Plastic Weekly Discord while we were watching, like, who's the favorite to win? Who's probably going to, you know, end up in sixth? And for the most part, Yanya was the favorite to win from everybody, although a couple people picked Orianne. Um, it could happen, right? And of course it did. And even though the, some of the boulders were very flashable, um, I think it's important to say that Orian simply won in what was a very fair finals. I do think Yanya was the better climber across the entire weekend. She simply got more tops across all three rounds. She was looking more confident and achieving uh, more goals throughout the entire event. But when it got to finals, both of them had boulders that they absolutely crushed that the other one couldn't. And when everything fell, when all the dust settled, uh, Orianne was ahead and it was a fair win. Could some of the boulders have been harder? Maybe would that have separated things in a different way? Yeah, but this was a fair fight. And if Yanya wanted to win this thing, she had lots of opportunities where she could have not used attempts for certain parts of those particular boulders. Like if if you wanted to win this comp, it's not like Orianne flashed four boulders, right? Like you fell on some moves, you fell on some starts and you fell on those starts twice, right? Um, so I think this was a fair win. I still think Yanya was the favorite going into it. I think Yanya is the favorite even if Orian actually was going to show up to Brixton, which he's not. Um, but I think it was a fair fight. It was a great win from Orian. It was deserved. I loved it. Let me ask you this. Do you think that Yanya's struggles on the slab, the second boulders in the women's final, which we will, uh, we can kind of hold off on analyzing it because I think we'll get into it maybe a little later, uh, unless you want to get into it now. But um, do you think, do you think it's a coincidence that she was struggling on a slab and slab, you would think training on a slab would be one of the hardest styles to train for with a fractured toe, right? When she broke her toe, we saw these images of her. She had that big plastic cat, plastic boot on, and she was able to still train like campusing up stuff. But obviously with that big boot, the, the one style or the one kind of the, the big muscle group and what, whatever that you can't train is you can't train like foot placement. You can't train slab. Do you do you think there's anything there? Or do you think it was just a, a coincidence that the one boulder that Yanya struggled on was the slab, which would have been, logic would tell you, the one kind of boulder that you can't really train at all with a fractured toe? I think the only place that falls apart is that it was like, it was a smearing slab, not, not a little crimpy foothold, like edging slab, right? Like 
that that giant was it yellow yellow vol actually i've got give me let me give me let me i'm pulling up the, i'm pulling up the photos give me one sec give me one sec here this is uh what women's number one so this is women's number so this is the slab right and all the footwork is on that giant yellow volume in the middle to me and, and again we should say that yanya was landing dynamic moves with her feet looking very confident um throughout this finals um particularly on women's number one where the first move was like a swinging dino you pounce off your feet right i didn't see any reason for this to be you know a boulder that that you would be less comfortable with if you still had any lingering problems with a toe in particular because you're going completely flat-footed on those yellow volumes and then the final hold you stand on is again a big round sloper um the problem for her and i again this is where i feel really uncomfortable but she wasn't able to stand up into that final hold. She just whiffed that move time and time again where she wasn't able to get her weight over her foot and she wasn't able to raise her center of mass to get her thumbs into that undercling like Fanny, uh, not Fanny, Flavi and uh, and Orianne managed to. It, it was just a, it was a clear weakness that she couldn't decode that move whereas Orianne flashed it, if I remember right. Um, that, that plus the multiple failed starts on women's number three... Yeah, women's number three. It was like those were just clear tests where it's like, oh, Orianne's just absolutely got you cooked in these particular skills today, at least. Like whether that's because Yanni had a bad day or Orianne had the best day of her life, I don't know. But Orianne beat her like crazy on those boulders. We might as well talk about the. I sent you some screen grabs here. Let's just yeah. Let's talk about the screen grab of Yanya on that third boulder mm -hmm. because this was really interesting to me. I think. Yanya not being I mean I'm just speculating I don't I have no idea I didn't talk to Yanya or her coach or whatever but uh it seemed to me like her struggles on that slab and her inability to to top that slab women's two really got in her head a little bit heading into women's three because if you if you look at the picture here so just to maybe remind people this is women's three the opening move the start move what you what the the beta that seemed to work for everybody was that right foot hooks toe hooks under that big um kind of prism looking volume kind of right where that the start tape the orange tape is there um and this was yanya's first attempt here you can see that that right foot is nowhere close to hooking under that volume that right foot is just flailing i don't know if that's yanya trying to toe hook and just you know whiffing big time or maybe just having a mental lapse or not knowing in the first place that she had to toe hook there but you can see that she doesn't get anywhere close to hooking that right toe under that big yellow volume and on top of that or maybe as a result of that you can see that her hips are just way out from the wall and that's just going to be such a hard position to be able to hold and of, of, she wasn't able to hold it she fell on that first attempt and then if you want, if you can click to the second attempt. Uh, so th this was interesting too. So she ends up, she gets that toe hook. She, she launches for that, the second move there. You can see where her right hand is latching it and her legs swing out. This is like the classic Yanya move. This is her namesake move. Pe you know, this is the Yanya also known as, or previously known as the scorpion move where she lets her legs swing out like that and she's able to kind of roll with that momentum and still hold it. But in this case, she wasn't able to hold that move, which was really surprising to me that she wasn't able to hold this move that has become her calling card. Uh, so she ended up falling on this attempt and then she falls on the third attempt and then she, I think it took her four attempts to get up that boulder. I think a clear-headed Yanya does not have any trouble on that boulder. I think th those struggles were clearly the lingering effects of not being able to send that second boulder. Again, this is just me me kind of guessing and riffing here, but I think that not being able to send that second boulder really rattled her for those first few starts on that third boulder. The the third boulder, the one we were just looking at, was was interesting because her fourth burn, which is when she achieved the zone and the top, was was an easy send, right? Like and you can claim that, oh, yeah, those first the moves that she felt on, those were learned moves or whatever. And she needed to, to feel them out before she could send it, possibly. But it wasn't a strenuous climb. Um, and that is the kind of boulder that I think usually Yanya would flash typically. Um, 
in the first attempt, like you said, she doesn't get the toe hook on the right. I should pull it back up just to uh, make sure that she doesn't get the toe hook on the right. In my opinion, she was just starting with her body a little too far left towards, you know, the left side of the wall. So she couldn't actually get her foot that far over to the uh, to the right. Um, and then for the for, for the attempt where she just kind of like fell off of the, the holes that you're supposed to paddle through, it just looked like she wasn't mentally prepared to make that paddle on that particular attempt. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's possible that she was a little bit shaken up. It could just be that her headspace just isn't there right now. Or she's There is maybe a little bit of ring rust. It's a word that I apparently myself and Matt Groom have both started using like boxing terms. I don't know. They all just came up all at once. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it was... Um, Anyway, re regardless of why it happened, it was very clear that Orient smashed those boulders and Yanya needed to take a bunch of attempts. So, uh, so big win, easy win. Yeah, this all dovetails into my headline. So I might as well go ahead and give mine yeah, because it. It will just, we'll just continue talking about all this. Uh, my headline is Prague World Cup, massive success or slight disappointment. And I realized that in being not as not as polarized as i thought i thought you were gonna go like massive success or terrible disappointment but you edged you edged up the bottom end a little I, bit okay I, I did a little bit but i guess it depends on to a degree somebody's level of fandom here and what they wanted to happen um and I, I, because this wasn't even part of my headline but i mean if you were expecting this storybook ending to the returns of yanya garnbrett and adam andra it's like you you were dis you almost got it. You were so close, right? To getting each of them having these glorious endings. It didn't quite work out that way. But you know, in, in terms of my headline, so have you ever like this is what I was trying to equate it to something. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and it's like everything is gr like the atmosphere is is great, the decor is cool, the maybe your you know, your friends are there, they're playing great music, the menu's good beer list, all that stuff, and then the food arrives and it's it's like eh. It's only so so, right? And it's like yeah, I have been to a great. Tim Hortons. Yes, yes, you nailed you nailed the Tim Hortons yeah. experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's kind of a big deal because the the food, in a lot of ways, is is the most important aspect of the of the of the whole experience. That was kind of how I how I thought about this event. First of all, let's talk about all the stuff that was Wait, good. Get, maybe you're about to address this, but are, are you saying that uh, the the result was disappointing, or like the or are you going to get into like the boulders being disappointing? I just kind of want to know where you're. Not the boulders specifically. Okay, I'm not going right. to analyze necessarily an individual boulder. So you're you're just you're a Yanya fan that's just mad that Yanya didn't win this comp. That's that's what you're saying. I don't think it is a matter of fandom, as I'll okay. explain here. I think there's right. other aspects. First of all, though, let's riff off some stuff that was good because there was a lot of great stuff about this event. First of all, the crowd was awesome. I mean, those shots of the crowd when it was just like deep. It looked like you were in some rock concert some state outdoor stadium or something it was something like eleven thousand people uh all packed inside what what seemed to be a really cool venue and fortunately the weather seemed to be good the whole weekend you did have the biggest superstars of our sport arguably returning in yanya garnbrett and adam andra and you ended up having some anointing of young stars dohyun and orion as you as you said in your headline in terms of some things that I was, I, I, I kind of, I don't know if they were bad, but just like, eh. first of all, that Natalia Yanya hype, the, the, the return, the rekindling of this rivalry that they started planting the seeds for before the previous world cup in Salt Lake city even went off the air. They were already tantalizing, you know, just teasing mm -hmm. us with this. We didn't end up getting it. That, to me, was a big letdown because they had started building the hype for that. And, and we had, whatever, two weeks to just anticipate how great it was going to be when you have these combatants back together fighting on the mats. So that was a bummer. Secondly, I thought the, the boulders were, for the most part, really, really cool. But let's not deny the fact that the men's was pretty undercooked especially when you're talking about for the upper level competitors the top level guys in the semis and also in the finals there was a there were a lot of tops yeah. <laughs> accentuated for the most part by by the fourth men's boulder obviously yes. they yeah. got everybody flashed it that's a big deal that that was, that was a problem and then related to your headline about orion and about yanya and the way things played out i thought it was a somewhat anticlimactic women's 
final where Orion wins even though she doesn't top that last boulder and then Yanya comes out and does top it. I don't I don't I don't like it whenever comps end like that. I I think the ideal situation of course is whoever tops this last boulder is going to win, right? Of course, that's the, yeah. that's the best sure. that's the best drama. They each end up Yanya and Orion each end up with three tops and a zone. And so I think you can't help but come away from it wondering, uh, okay, like, it, Orion won, all credit to her, but it wasn't exactly a, a definitive win, or I, at least there's room for discussion here that maybe it wasn't exactly a definitive win. I can, I can, I can sympathize with the idea that, like, it sucks that the, the ending note of the competition is a great success of somebody who has already lost, right? Like, Yanya crushed that fourth boulder. That was fucking sick. But it was already over. Like, she could not win. So I was like, oh, great. You just absolutely did something that nobody else managed to do in the entire competition. But it's not good enough. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it feels like it doesn't matter, right? Um, yeah. I, I can empathize with that. I think it was a, a more than fair win, but I, I certainly feel you on that. And I'm, that's the predicament with lead climbing comps all the time, right? Is how often is it the last person out in finals that actually wins a comp? Um, not that often. I, I will say what was really fascinating is it presented this really intriguing larger storyline, which we kind of seen bits and pieces of, but but this just kind of accentuated it, where y you have Yanya trying to con to to expand her greatness, to to like continue winning gold medals, right, and and then you have this younger generation that is like catching up to her, I think. And we saw it with Natalia and and now we've seen it with Orion. The interesting thing is those two storylines which will continue to play out this season presumably and you know next season and, and what have you. They're they can't both win out, right? Only one like either Yanya is going to continue uh being as great as we know she can be or this younger generation is just going to continue catching up to her more and more and that level between Yanya and the rest of the field is going to to significantly diminish. You can't have both. And and at this point we I... don't know which one is going to play out, right? Because it because Orion the the new kind of the new star did get this win, but it wasn't going back to what I said. It wasn't like this definitive out climbing Yanya type of performance for the whole for the weekend on the whole. Uh Time will tell. <laughs> That's interesting because I, I think like we, we've we've had this period, this such a long period now where Yanya is the clear top name uh, when it comes to both bouldering and lead climbing. And I think like it's, I think we should remember that it's so rare that in women's bouldering, we actually get periods of parody where it is just simply competitive at every single event between the climbers. And I know there's a lot of people actually that, that long for this. They always say, Oh, it's, it's so boring when Yanya is just winning everything. And in their opinion, sure. Yeah, whatever. I disagree. But, but um, I know there's a lot of people that would love to see comps where you get the stars showing up and who's going to win. Nobody knows. It's whoever's best on the day because they're all so close. So I hope like, I, I feel like you're kind of making it out. Like if this happens, Yanya is just going to be on the downslope and the other girls on the upslope and they just cross each other and Yanya never wins another, uh, another world cup and, and the others kind of take over. But the dream is, is something close to what we're experiencing now where am I right? We've had four four separate gold medalists now this season brooke miho natalia and orianne mm -hmm. that's yeah. pretty cool man when was the last time that happened that, it is pretty cool I'm, i actually I'm have not, to check i'm not sitting here saying i wouldn't be uh, i wouldn't enjoy continued continuing to watch that and i want to be clear i'm not meaning to, i'm not taking anything away from orianne totally <laughs> legitimate win uh i i guess one of the things that i wonder and we've pondered this on previous calls is if Yanya is no longer winning gold medals is she going to want to stay on the circuit right and and I think it could go either way I think you could see her just saying because she in all her posts and she she always says like I just I love climbing I love competing well it's easy to say that when you're winning gold medals right it's it's probably a little harder Fair. to say that when you once won gold medals and and now you're not and maybe now you're not even getting on the podium and blah 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 we're not there yet you know so we don't need to kind of go into that too much but i do wonder when you're saying this other generation kind of coming up are they going to be able to catch yanya and is yanya going to go down i don't know if yanya would even be around if she's not 
if she's not winning. I, I think it could easily be a scenario where Yanya, if she does start to get a couple silvers, she's just like, you know what, I'm going to go make the big bucks, do an outdoor sends, and 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 that's it. I think that that is kind of the the the. the um... I, I think whether or not she's winning or not isn't going to be as much of a deciding factor. Like, I think so long as she's consistently in finals, which I think she can do probably for the rest of her, like, you know, however long she wants her career to be at this point, I wouldn't doubt her. Like, I'm sure she could pull an Adam or a Jane Kim and just be making finals in your 30s, right? Um, but I think, I feel like if she enjoys the people that she gets to compete with and she is still building cachet as just like a legendary climber, which I'm getting more and more comfortable with that word being a associated with Yanya. So if, if I'm managing to do that, you know, it's like, it's a little bit closer to true. Um, but if you're having fun and you're getting some prize money and you're in the fight for the gold and maybe you get a gold once a season or approximately like something like that, you win a few medals. I think that's still worth it for her brand. And the other thing to mention is when, when we get out of the combined era, if she decides she wants to specify with one discipline or another, then, then that gives you much more time in the season to, to, be both a competitive athlete and an accomplished outdoor climber, especially if you pick bouldering, because bouldering is so nice and condensed, whereas lead climbing starts in June and usually runs to like September or October. It's a it's a much longer season, right? Um, so hopefully that doesn't come about. But uh, but you're right. If there is a big outdoor big outdoor sponsorship, then who knows? But uh, I think she'll stick around a little bit longer than than you might be uh, uh, concerned about. I think she's uh, I think she's a good sport. I think she actually loves it. I hope. But, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I hope she sticks around. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, if it's not public, I would imagine she will do some internal deliberation, kind of soul searching after the Paris 2024 Olympic push, whatever that whatever happens in, in trying to qualify for Paris and, and onward. I would imagine after Paris, like we saw with Akio, right? Obviously, different ages, different different circumstance. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if I mean that's just such an obvious line of kind of demarcation, right? Like you have the Olympics, sure. and then you kind of do a career assessment, yeah. Um, or you have a, a, a if not an Olympics, a push for Olympic qualification, and then you do a, a career assessment. So all I think is she's not going to have the opportunity to win both a Boulder gold, uh, Boulder Olympic gold and a lead Olympic gold until 2028. So if she wa really wants to, you know, be the master of both disciplines, that's the, the ultimate prize or whatever. If you know what she's done already doesn't convince everybody enough that she's uh, like a masterful <laughs> climber in both, in both events. I just want to, to respond to, to, you know, what the comp was in terms of like, was it a success or was it a mess? Um, I think the weakest part for me, and we'll talk about this was the root setting. We'll talk about that more later on, I'm sure. Um, but I thought the events all in all went great. I thought the broadcast was for the most part, really good. I thought Sean was a great co-commentator. I would really like it if Chloe Coscoy doesn't commentate any more events. I'm not trying to be rude. I just don't enjoy it. Um, find it's extremely monotonous. Um, but uh, I thought the climbing was excellent. It was great to have Yanya back and Adam that added so much. And just all of the audience being so engaged and extremely supportive of all of the athletes. Like, I think that's the most important thing. And not that like this is a problem in climbing, but I think in Europe, it's a little bit stronger where every single climber is going to have a huge uh, sense of support behind them. And we really saw that no matter who was winning, no matter who was falling, everybody got huge rounds of applause. It was a crowd of climbers. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I hope it stays on the, uh, on the calendar based on what we saw. Um, I, for me, I don't know if that's a world cup I would go to just because when it's just like open sun and there seems to be no escape from, from just like the, the boiling summer heat of, of central Europe, I don't, I don't know if that's where I want to be. Like, hopefully not too many people got heat stroke in that, in that event. But uh, otherwise, it looked like pretty flawless from, from our perspective sitting here at home. So I, I, <laughs> give it, I give it two thumbs up, man. Yeah, I guess when I say that it was good weather, I, I, I'm thinking of the, the comps sure, this season and, yeah. and last year that we had marred with rain. I, I suppose there's a whole other spectrum about it being too hot and too sunny. No, I'm with you. Yeah, you know, it's it's just for, for the super tall people with low blood pressure and pale skin. Like, it's, it's the nightmare for people like us. But right, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about winners. Uh, if we haven't, like, talked about winners already. I'm curious who, who your, like, winner from the event is, you know, if we're not allowed to talk about Orianne and whatnot uh, my winner would be yanya and this goes no along kidding. with a lot of the stuff that we've already said i mean like i said it would have been a, a i think a lot of people would have enjoyed that story of her coming back and 
and winning a gold medal. There's a storybook ending in a way to that, but you, we can't expect her to be superhuman, right? And I think sometimes fans and, and even us people in the media, you kind of have to temper your expectations a little bit. But I think on the whole, Yanya did have the most dominant performance throughout the, the whole weekend in Prague. Now, I say on the whole, and, and I want to say again, I got to stress this, all credit to Orion because comps are not scored on the whole, right? You get you get qualies and then you get a clean slate and then you get semis and then you get a clean slate and then you get the finals. So so Orion certainly um, deserves all the accolades, all the applause in the world for that. But just think about what Yanya did. She's gone for, I think it was like 14 months from the Boulder World Cup circuit, something like that, right? She obviously, she was back for lead, but if you're going back to bouldering, it was more than a year, steps away after Mayringen of last season, comes back, in coming back, manages to handle pressure and expectations that, quite frankly, I, most of the other women in the field, and most of the men, for that matter, will never know. They will never know the type of pressure that Yanya has upon her because she is Yanya, right? Because she has all these previous accolades to her name, because she's an Olympian, and because she's swept a season, on and on. Everybody that's watching this debrief knows um, about all the great things Yanya has Every, done. And, yeah, at this point, everybody knows, yeah, Yanya's uh, yeah, record. Yeah, and, and think about how easy it would be for, like, a regular person to just cave under the, the anxiety of coming back after, after being gone for so long and having all of those people expecting great things of you yanya what happens she comes back she managed to, she manages to dominate for two out of the three rounds at prague she had something like eight flashes in total on all the boulders that's that's incredible she only gets stymied she only gets truly stopped on one boulder and that's the slab that we talked about i think sadly that will probably and it was on the finishing move as well like let's be clear like not well not it was a pretty short boulder but like she cruised that boulder except for one move it was the most important move but it was one move it was one move on one boulder and it's too bad that i think those that struggle there and her inability to top that boulder will be kind of the lasting image of this comp for a lot of people when they're thinking of yanya at this at this particular event and that's too bad because like I said, that's the only boulder she struggled. Only struggling on one boulder. Orion can't say that. Orion struggled on more than one boulder. Flavi can't say that. She struggled on more than one boulder. Men's division, Dohyun struggled on more than one. Adam Andra struggled. Yanya was the only competitor to be, that's what I said at the beginning when I started talking here, to be so dominant throughout all rounds uh, throughout the weekend. And so I, I just feel like it was an incredible performance. I think it should be acknowledged because I think uh, it's easy to look at this and kind of say, oh, gosh, but Yanya didn't win. And you're like, well, she w looked fantastic in earning a silver medal, a silver medal of which a lot of competitors on the roster would do anything for a silver medal, right? They've never yeah. and 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 we 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 think of Yanya as it's somehow like not what we expected. And it's that like, is no. that is the messed up thing with people like Yanya. And I I remember uh, um, I can't remember who had been writing for climbing, you know, in the in the early two thousands. But there was a comment similar to this for Liv Sansos. But the the remark for Yanya would be, "This is one of her worst results in years." And I'm being completely honest, but it's a fucking silver medal. Like that's yeah. that's what's insane. Their silvers are so rare, right? It's uh, but it is also a, a, a if if you just have to say okay, what's your best result and what's your worst result? Yeah, your best result is first. Your worst result is second. That's crazy. Yeah, we are kind of in this area where Yanya is sort of a victim of her own success at this point, which she's done so much and won so many gold medals that anytime she doesn't win gold medals, it's kind of like oh my gosh, Yanya didn't win. Uh, but I, I think we need to kind of sift through that for a moment and just look at the performance throughout whatever Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was, it was pretty jaw dropping. It was pretty awesome stuff.
Yeah, I think uh, very legit performance. And again, I think she was the favorite going into this event. So I actually think coming in second was a, a slight disappointment, but again, very slight. Um, but I think she expected herself to, to win gold. I think just where she was at with her training, I think she was confident that she was over this thing with her toe. I think she knew her. I don't think she would have come back if she wasn't ready to compete pretty much at the highest level. So I think it was still a disappointment for her, but it is... Uh, after that many months, like you said, there is part of me when I'm making those predictions where I'm like, yes, Yanya will win the Prague World Cup. There's part of you that's like, damn, you're you're really like laying down the gauntlet for somebody that's been off for quite a while, right? But it just like proves how much of she is just like an ultimate top tier competitor where you can go through that and still, you know, like pundits like us are still saying, yeah, she's a favorite to win when you're gone for that long. It is that by itself is the success, really. Um, Do you think that it... She's so Yanya is not on the roster for Brixen. Yeah. And do you think that kind of helps or hurts how we would how we think of her performatively, I guess? Because that like if she would go if she would take part in Brixen and and win, I think that's like a that's a there's a big chance for redemption there or whatever you want to call it, right? Kind of er, quickly erasing this this the memory of this silver medal and then and then the most recent memory we have of Yanya would be if she would go to Brixen and win Brixen it'd be yeah Yanya the gold medalist um so I'm I'm kind of how do you analyze that decision to not do Brixen good bad or indifferent here's here's how I analyze this okay so I don't know if this is a thing that other people are aware of in other countries this might just be a very Canadian thing but there's this island between and it's actually probably like an, an Instagram meme because it's so typical of our cultures but there's an island between Arctic Canada and Greenland which is like a, a territory of Denmark right and it's been disputed for ages who uh who owns this island is this a Hans Island Han Island Hans Island uh, is this Canadian land or is this Danish land and the way things would work out is the Danish army would go out they would plant the Danish flag and apparently they would leave like a bottle of alcohol just as a joke and then you know next season the Canadians would come over remove the Danish flag plant the Canadian flag leave a bottle of like Scott like whiskey or whatever and this would just go back and forth and that's what happens in, and that's what's happening in the women's boulder is somebody wins the boulder event and they're like peace I'm out of here and then somebody else comes in the next event they don't have to actually compete against the previous winner they plant their flag and then they're like all right I'll see you guys in a few you know weeks or whatever and somebody else takes the win and so we're not getting this head-to-head -head back and forth where so if Yanya manages to to win uh, let, let, let's say Yanya was going to Brixen which I, I believe now that the uh, attendance is confirmed I think Natalia is there um, I think Brooke bailed and uh, uh, um, uh, Orien is not going so if Yanya manages to win there it's a win over Natalia but does it like, you know, does it suggest that, yes, I've conquered Orien? Not so much. I think that's just kind of a, a weak point of this entire season is we're just not getting enough head to heads to really say who is actually dominant. Um, we kind of have to go all of our priors from the years before. Right. Um, so I don't think it would make that much of a difference if she came back and won in Brixen. And I think it's reasonable, especially going into a comp as um just as draining as Innsbruck, where it's, it's you know, the back-to-back the -back boulder and lead event. Like, that's a really big World Cup in terms of the amount of energy and effort you got to put into that. I think an even bigger, like, middle finger to the rest of the field would be to win just both of those. Win the boulder gold, win the lead gold. If you can do that, everybody's just shaking in their boots and saying, well, it looks like Yanya hasn't given up that first place. It looks like all of us are really competing for just two spots at Switzerland, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I get it, especially when, you know, you might want to say Prague was a bit of like a, a testing ground. Like, let's see where we're at. And and Roman kind of his uh, his comments are saying like, okay, good. Now we have stuff to work on, right? We saw some weakness. We saw some stuff that we didn't flash. <laughs> crazy, crazy high bar again, right? Not not top. Just like, oh, you didn't flash this. We need to work on it. Um, Let me ask you another question then, related to those the three people who are in this trifecta because two of one of them is Yanya and two of them have proven to be able to beat Yanya. So mm -hmm. we're talking Yanya, Orion, and Natalia. Yanya fans right now are so mad that that like the two World Cups that she's been beat by Natalia and Orion were so close. They're like, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. But yeah, sure. Well, so my question is of those three, if you can only choose one, which one are you 
like most intrigued about the rest of their season because I think they're all kind of curious cases for their own reason, right? And and they're very different reasons. Do you mean, um, do you mean like the Boulder season, or are we talking about just like twenty twenty three as like an Olympic qualifying year, a year where everybody's trying to perform at their best? Like, because the Boulder season's kind of like already over, sort of, right? Yeah, I guess it would be the whole thing since we, it, since Boulder's already almost done, and like right. and people are you know like Yanya's not at Brixen and all that. Um, so I guess I, it would be the rest of the year. But like, if you only had to choose one and and really like be like this is the person that I'm most interested in like putting the magnifying glass on seeing what happens for the rest of this season. I think I would have two and I, I have trouble picking one. One is Natalia because I think her health issues that have kind of become a headline in their own right this year um, is a really interesting and difficult challenge. And I'm really interested to see how that plays out, how she talks about it and how she handles it in an extremely high pressure year. So I think that by itself deserves a spotlight, even though it's a private issue and she it, she is not obliged to share anything with us. I'm still curious. Um, but then the other one is Oriane because she is the youngest kind of like gold tier competitor in the field right now. Um, it's This was, I think, the youngest gold medal win for, for five or six years since uh, since Yanya won her first Boulder gold. So we've got this really young competitor who we started building a bit of a narrative about. She's got this seasonal drop off. She does great in the first Boulder events. But by the time we get to lead season, she's just like a husk of her, of her earlier self. So I think that's really compelling, too. And for Oriane, the extra dose of that is she's French going into a French Olympics. So my interest in is in those two mostly. Um, I think they're both uh, both. In, maybe I would give the edge to Oriane because this all culminates in the possibility of a of a gold medal win at home. But um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Oriane is interesting as well because so you mentioned how she kind of drops off. That's been the trend that we've seen. I actually I, I wrote down some of her her stats here. So 2021 which is really when that pattern was first established of like, okay, she's going to start first really season. strong. Yeah. 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 And, and she, and then she's going to dwindle. Uh, so Mayring in to open the season, 2021, she gets second place. Then in Salt Lake city, number one, she gets second place. And then in Salt Lake city, number two, she gets fourth place. So it's second place, second place, fourth place, basically all the same results ultimately. Yep. Like, yeah. And then it starts. And then in Innsbruck, she gets 16th. So a little bit of a dip there. And then in you know going to the world championships in bouldering, she got she got forty first. So and keep keep in mind that those those worst results are coming on her home continent, right? Like normally it's kind of the the opposite where you actually do okay at in your like when you can travel by train or a short flight, and it's those those uh, um, those events that happen out. So actually, you know what? I guess Maringen would have been the first event, and then two Salt Lakes, and then what yep. was the what was and the then fourth? back to and then to Innsbruck, and then there were the World Championships. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm so, so I'm kind of messing up messing up the narrative based on the current seasons. But anyway, go your, but, your but point it, still stands. But then 2022 last year, mm -hmm. Maringen fourth place, Seoul second place. Again, you know, really great start, and then. Salt Lake City seventh, Salt Lake City eighth. So I mean, like, still it's it's still way up there. But like seventh day, you start to see a little bit of a dip, and then Innsbruck thirty third. Right. So again, that that same pattern. Here in twenty twenty three, she's maybe she's kind of <laughs> we've we've now had the first four comps. So this is this is the this is the falling off point, right? Is well, she's going to be in double digits when we get to the next comp? <laughs> but she got, she started off the season with thirty first in Hachioji. So she started out yeah. low. And then in Seoul, she was second. Uh, then in Salt Lake, she was second, I think. Can't mm -hmm. read my own handwriting. And then in Prague, she she won the gold, obviously. So it was 31st, second, second, first. So I am curious, since she did start low, 31st, in Hachioji, is is this a whole different script for Orion this season? Are we going to see her continue to kind of be at the top? Or are we going to be in that same pattern that we saw in 2021 and 2022? That's a, that's a really intriguing thing that we'll have to watch because that that 31st place in Hachioji to start out the season just kind of wrecks our our uh, whatever you want to say our patterns <laughs> we'll <laughs> so, see we'll see how like you know time will tell and maybe we can write that off as as just a bad day right you know I think yeah. I think she kind of admitted that too is like I was just not not there but uh yeah we'll have to see but that is a, that is a good point there's multiple angles to which Oriane is one to watch for the for this season yeah and Yanya is an interesting case because I mean, she did look, as we said, really dominant here in Prague, but I can't help but think to this something you and I recently talked about, which is like, what if Mayringen 2020, 2022 Two. hadn't happened? Um, and, or, I mean, yeah, like Yanya hadn't 
been there or hadn't won there, um, then it, we're talking like years. It's like that. Ju- it's just that one comp, and and that may, has made all the difference. If that didn't happen, we're talking yeah, several so, years here where Yanya hasn't won a gold medal. So. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, at this point, it would mean that we're about two years since Yanya's last win, and all of us understand that she hasn't been to most of these comps, but. It's only been that one that one Maringen win from from last season, and you say like, "Wow, it's been it's been a couple of years, man." So uh, yeah. it's an interesting narrative. So it's it's been a while since we've seen a Boulder Gold from from Yanya. Um, uh, anyway, I want to talk about my winner. I was kind of torn between Doyen and Flavi, to be honest. Um, Flavi had a <laughs> like like I said in the Discord, we uh, we posed who we thought would win, who we thought would come sixth place. And then you could fill in the other two podium spots, right? So I, I don't think I made predictions, but a lot of people said Yanya to win, Flavi or Futaba to to come sixth, and then like Orianne and Miho or Orianne and uh, and whoever to come uh, come third. Um, so Flavi absolutely killed it for for our first finals. That was she really beat expectations. But Doyen has to be my winner for sure, and we'll just you know kind of round out all the names that got gold medals. Um, he. What was he like? He third, second, third place in in qualifiers in his group, like a very strong qualifying finish. First place in semifinals, and then closes it with an extremely uh, strong finals performance, which is made the more impressive because in a round where you're not allowed to mess up because everybody's getting tops, he was the one that had to come out last on every boulder, knowing how everybody did right. So um, you mentioned earlier that you. Uh, like I, I should just say, I loved Boulder Number One. Boulder Number One was like the perfect mix of tops to flashes for me. I like a lot of tops so long as there are a lot of attempts as well. And Boulder Number One was this good mix where I think we got one, maybe two flashes, but otherwise everybody else that topped it had to put in a bunch of work, and so they were separating by attempts. And then I think Jan uh, 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 Luca didn't get a top, so that's me. It was pretty much like my kind of Boulder. I love that stuff. Lots of tops, very few flashes, and then it really started to fall apart. Part. And the pressure was on, but it was so funny because we were, you know, in my head, I'm all like, this is Mejdi's to win. I want to see three. Like, that would be a huge deal. Just historically, even though it's not three in a row, uh, um, it would still be nice to see. Um, so in my head, I was just like between between uh, Mejdi and Adam this entire time. And all the while, Doyen is just creeping along, just like, nah, I'm going to take I'm gonna take a little flash here. I'm going to take, I might take two attempts. I'll take two attempts here, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'll flash this one too. And then it gets down to the final boulder where you've had five guys shrink read this boulder you know that they've all flashed it because everybody is just ending it so quickly and the crowd was going nuts very early and you come out knowing that before this final boulder you were in first place and you know you can win your first world cup by flashing this boulder that's a little bit clutch like as much as also it was one of the easiest men's boulders we've probably seen in a couple years it was way too easy that's still a lot got to be going in his head as he's standing there with the curtains about to open up being like, I've the, the gold medal's right in front of you, dude. Like, do you have the balls to to take it? Can you handle it? Like, I'm, I'm so curious what his headspace was in those like the four minutes where he's sitting behind there while the while the uh, athlete before him was climbing. That must have been wild. Like to be a fly on the wall of ISO for those couple minutes. I, I would pay a lot of money to see that. We need cameras in ISO, man. Like, come on. Yeah, uh, uh, premium content, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's your extra content. People will pay to see kind of additional camera behind the scenes and stuff. Yeah, I so I want to talk about Dohyun. I do that. That fourth boulder is so perplexing because it was not just that they made it look easy. It was like way easy, like Mm -hmm. way, way easy. And I'm just wondering and all due respect to the route setters and anybody that watches and, you know, everybody knows we love the route setters. But like, I'm like, how did they? miscalculate that much in forerunning it's not just that everybody topped it it's that everybody flashed it like that is a big miss for the route setting team and and i they had a, a great route setting crew cody gradsky was on the route setting crew he's a friend of the show he's been on here before so um i'm just kind of curious like what happened with the forerunning of that like how did they how did they miscalibrate that one so much i i i i, I don't know but um about Do Hyun though, he, we were just talking about like the future of Orion and, and Yanya and Natalia. Do Hyun is a fascinating case as well because what he, if you look at his previous stats from other years, he'll have really strong performances, but then he'll have sometimes when he just 
plummets like way down and you're like whoa what what happened like i in in 2022 for example he was a fourth in brixen he was a second second place at innsbruck and then he has at Meiringen, i think he was like 41st or something like that and um here this year at hachioji he was seventh in seoul he was fourth and then in salt lake city he was 39th and like and it's i know that everybody can have good days and bad days but if you look at the top tier competitors the people that we you know like like a yanya or natalia or brooke or whatever they don't usually plummet that much right like going from second to 41st they it's not usually quite that drastic and so i'd like to see is dohyun able to maybe like get over this hurdle where he is like consistently up there. I'm not saying he has to consistently make finals or consistently get on the podium or anything, but just these, the, this disparity here where it's like, you're, you know, uh, not even close to making semis one, one time. And then the next time you're in the finals, yeah, that that's, that's not something that you see in a lot of the other top, top level, uh, competitors. Yeah, I think this season could be could be the turnaround. Like and like you said, like at, in Salt Lake City, he had a pretty dismal result with a 39th. But you know, to win the Boulder World Cup for the season, you get a gimme, right? If there's at least six events in the season, you get to drop one. So that result can count for nothing if he does okay. And then he's looking at possibly a full season of results in the top ten, and that becomes a really good season. And it's not that crazy for for the best male athletes to have just you know a crappy comp here and there. Like in that sure. men's field, that's not that wild. So if if he can keep up this kind of consistency, it's actually looking like shaping up to be like a a, a genuine top ten ranking. Like you're getting the invite for next season. So yeah, I. I... And I and I totally realize like it's not that unusual. It does happen, but it it would be a little less glaring if it's like okay he makes a final, makes a final, and then oh he's thirteenth, and then oh he's twenty first, or you know. But it's like we're talking like you know forty first. That's mm-hmm. that's down there a ways. Yeah. Um, that's not that, uh, that's not uh, something that is uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say unnoticeable, right? That's pretty glaring when I look at his results. Sure. That disparity. Yeah. You know the one the one thing that I got to point out, and I'm curious if photographers have, have anything to say about this. The one the one downside to Doyen is when he has his most expressive moments, he's like completely sheltered and in his own zone. So like he tops men's three and just like he's got his arms up and he just like yells at the wall for a second, like doesn't turn around, and then he he wins the thing. He has like a, a solemn moment hanging onto the jug where I'm sure he's just like you know savoring that handhold right on men's number four. He comes down like a little wave and then he does another scream, but he does it to the floor. He's like fully hunched over. So I'm just feeling so bad for all the photographers who are trying to get the moment right from this guy. But he, he just seems to be like, yeah. And then he comes back to real life. I'm like, share it. You can give give us all some of that energy, man. Yeah. Um, Jong Wan should uh, coach him because Jong Wan is giving us some. The, the king of the slow, like the slow turnout off one arm and just like staring at the crowd. Yeah. We need a little more, a little more Jung Wan energy there. Yeah. yeah. I, they, they have to be one of the best uh, mentor mentee duos in in the history of the sport right it's just so cool to they're, see them they're a duo where i would love it if we could actually get some like some really good content around because i i i you know we hear all these stories talking about jong Wan being a really important kind of uh i don't know if you want to say like older brother or like coach or like father figure to this guy like father figures a little too too they're not you know that their age difference isn't that big um but it would be great if you know, when we're doing these like athlete focuses that the IFSC is starting to talk about, that's a pair that I would really like to get, get a translator involved and, and actually get them answering questions in their native language and, and kind of sharing how they, how they work together and, and their history. That's, I think, a really uh, intriguing dynamic. I, I hope they, uh, they follow that up because that's such a, uh, such a cool thing to see two athletes that openly talk about their relationship with each other and, uh, when it's two like well one very colorful athlete in Zhang Wan and now a new winner right like a, a rising star I think that's like a, a very valuable piece of media property. I thought it was really telling when Zhang Wan or I'm sorry when Do Hyun posted on his Instagram about his win, and he was saying great job to all the other people on the podium. He said thanks to uh, Zhang Wan Chan right like mm-hmm. he thanked him in his social media post and I was thinking like gosh. I can't remember another time that a competitor that won, like thanked another competitor who's on the 
uh, you know, on the same national team, just as like a, just as a thing, like, you know, not, I'm not saying thank the whole national team. I'm not saying thank the coach, but just thanked another competitor who was like a really good friend, mentor, whatever you want to say. It was a cool moment. That's what I'm curious about because you see a lot of, you see a lot of athletes who, who train together and spend a lot of time together. And I can imagine them being grateful for the support that these athletes give to each other. But the way they talk about each other seems different. It does seem like there is a stronger kind of mentor, mentee, formal thing. You might be somebody that could even talk about this in the future is, is what are those kind of relationships like in a place like Korea where I have no cultural reference at all? Um, that's something I'd like to learn a little bit more about. And maybe these are the two people that that, that would be a lens for. It. But uh, yeah, so anyway, my winner is Doyen, uh, Doyen Lee. Congratulations on the first win. New guy in the club. I thought it was excellent. Like uh, I spent, I was so tunnel vision on Mejdi and Adam. It was, it was, you know, a nice kick in the pants for it to be somebody else. It, it was great. I'm bring on the rest of the season with Dohyun. I want to yeah. see how he does. I want to see if, like I said before, I want to see if this was like a truly a, a sort of a new plateau for a new hurdle for him. If he's going to kind of be consistently at the top now, we'll see. Yeah. Let's talk about losers. We're, we're going to have to do it to them. Uh, I, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. All right. Uh, my loser was Futaba Ito. Oh. Uh, um, we have been expecting her or, or kind of like wondering if and when she's going to, what do you say, don the crown that was handed down from Akio to Miho. And then is, is Futaba going to be the next... From Miho now, Futaba will be the big uh, star of the of Japan's women's team. Kind of been expecting it. Kind of saw a little fl- like f- flashes potential here and there. But I think really expectations went into high gear at the Asia Continental Championships last uh, what was it, October something like that. Mm-hmm. I think um, when Futaba won the Boulder discipline at at those asia continentals and so i think since then we've a lot of us have thought okay it's only a matter of time until she has a truly breakout performance on the world cup circuit and i kind of thought that this might be it because she had all the momentum uh from the very start right she she leads her group in qualification and she's right there next to Yanya leading, leading the, the whole field. She gets into semifinals and again, she finishes the semifinals right behind Yanya. And this is what really put my hype into kind of overdrive. She actually outclimbed Yanya on that, the last boulder in the semifinals, because if people remember, I think it took Yanya a couple attempts to get up, up it, but Futaba flashed it. And I think Futaba was the only competitor to flash it. So I, that moment for me, I was like, wow, you know, if the stars aligned, Futaba could actually challenge Yanya to win this, this women's, um, this women's event. <laughs> Little did we know that Orion would come to do that. But, but it just seemed like everything was happening right. Everything was going right for Futaba heading into the final round. And then all of a sudden she struggles on that first, move of the women's the the first boulder in the finals like that swinging kind of swinging jump um the second boulder it's the slab she actually had a really good launch to the top on one of her attempts and she i think got both her hands on it but she couldn't stick it in watching that i'm thinking okay if futaba is going to kind of be the next uh leader of the women's japan squad she's she's going to be able to she's going to need to be able to do those dynamic coordination moves and we have seen her struggle on those not only here at this competition but in previous competitions so that's something that i think she still has to work on she didn't end up topping the uh, the third or the fourth boulder i don't believe i don't think she had any tops in the final round and it just felt like gosh darn it everything that had gone right for futaba in the qualies and the semis kind of went wrong for her in the final round and that was too bad because I really thought this was a good a good opportunity. I really thought we were going to see some some fireworks from her in the finals. I I've lost a lot of interest in Futaba Ito just because she's a you know typically a pretty high uh, high finishing competitor in the broad picture, but but just uh, and I, I I keep thinking back to she's one of those athletes that has the curse of 
basically having an international debut when you're a young teenager. And I think that's just such a such a hard start for everyone. Like I just will always remember hearing that a 14 year old won the Japanese Boulder Nationals. And instantly that name is is stuck in your head as like, oh, this must be, you know, this must be the next generation person. Uh, that's it. You could say like Brooke Rabatou had a similar kind of uh, uh, um, debut like that, you know, being basically a YouTube star at the age of 10. And you could say the same thing probably about a couple other athletes. Um, just well, Ashima, I guess, is, is one who went the other way and kind of gave up on competition, which is probably a healthy choice. Um, yeah, I, I don't envy being in that position at all. I don't have too much to say about it, but I, I, I honestly, my expectations at this point are very low uh, for Futaba, like making finals. She's not somebody that I rely on to get tops anymore. Um, she was kind of one of the most common choices for for last place or bottom two spots for this event from from the people just in the in the Plastic Weekly Discord. I don't have a lot to say. Um, I think it's just because I don't find it surprising anymore. I'm just I I really expect nothing at this point. Um, honestly, I she's one of those athletes where I'm like I hope you're enjoying this because. Otherwise, it can't possibly be worth it. It can't be worth the pressure. It can't be worth the expectation put upon a woman on the on the Japanese bouldering team, right? Like you, you kind of said, like there is this kind of expectation that Japan will have this clear lineage, right? Where when when one king dies, there is there is the offspring ready to take that crown again. And and we're just kind of seeing with the women's side, it hasn't quite worked out uh the way that we maybe expected because we always talk about that wow japan's just got this endless you know factory of names that come out and can make it to a world cup finals but who have been the consistent ones right you know it's been akio it's been miho and we talk about miho's kind of like up and down career but she has generally been very consistently a, a finalist right and then on the men's side we've got the three boys and then a, a kind of a rotating cast of characters over the year but outside from those names we haven't seen anybody really come up and consistently stay there. So um, I think uh, I think maybe I have to readjust my expectations for, for what the Japanese team is. Maybe this is kind of the best it's going to get. And maybe it's going to take another generation to raise themselves up rather than just have a handoff. Um, not a handout, but just like, a you know, it's not going to be as clean of a handoff from one generation to the other as maybe I expected it would be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who's your who's your uh, loser? I feel bad because I thought I thought your loser was going to be about the boulders. Um, so I also picked a, a female boulder. Um, my loser is Stassi Gayo, I guess. Um, this one feels kind of weird because I, I I don't want I'm I feel like I'm giving advice to a World Cup competitor, which is awfully bold. <laughs> but um, I was really turned off when less than three minutes into Stasia's final, she was just like hitting her head in frustration. Um, I really like having Stasia on, you know, the, the, the commentary booth every once in a while. Like I like hearing her a couple times a year just to, just to see what she thinks and, and hear what's going on with the athletes and hear an honest opinion about the climbing. But I'm not having a good time watching somebody behave like they're like managing their stress. Like they're a rookie, right? Stasia is now one of the oldest competitors in the scene at the moment, which feels a little crazy, but it's simply true. Like her and Miho were the two oldest climbers born the same year in 97. Um, like I'm not, I guess maybe I'm stupid, but in, I don't think like, is that how pro athletes han handle their frustration? Like, is that how pro climbers with a decade, like a literal decade of world cup experience manage their stress by just, being visibly frustrated and ultimately like smacking yourself on the head or is that like a uh is it a balkan thing and like culturally i just don't understand how how people from that part of the world express themselves like maybe all of that is true but like at this point in Stasi's career making a finals is not a given for her right i think she's still got a little bit of a, a halo from the couple years like 2019 and the year before or the year after where she you know got some bronze medals and she became kind of a name that people knew and they liked her passion and stuff, but that's not this, this Stasi isn't that anymore, right? Like Stasi making a finals is a good day. Qualifying for the Olympics is not a given for Stasia either. So I think she needs to adjust what her expectations are. And on the couple of days that she does 
actually make a finals, I think she needs to understand and expect that the boulders are going to be way too hard for her based on where her average level is. And given that, she shouldn't be sabotaging her very best days by, like I said, just, I don't want to see her in, in like making finals is, a, is, a, is almost a peak performance now for Stasia. And I hate to see her ruin it by losing her composure and behaving like somebody that's new to the circuit when she debuted in 2013, right? Her first World Cup was in 2013. So I, all I'm saying, I'm not giving her advice on what to do. Maybe she knows better than I do, but I really hated watching that. So if if she's not my loser for the event, I'm... I'm the loser for this event. <laughs> Maybe, anyway, well, we, obvious jokes aside, but I really hated that. That turned me off instantly. And again, it was on the first boulder before it was even over. That was such a huge turnoff and I'm just not into it. We've kind of seen that before from her. I don't know if you happen to have your phone on you by any chance or, or accessible, but um, yeah. if you if you could, I don't know. I, and I don't want to like, I'm not trying to, pat myself on the back or anything. I'm just using this to illustrate that we have seen this before from her. If you, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of this event, you are right before the women's final, you, you and I were texting back and forth about our predictions. And I, uh, predicted what I thought was going to happen to Stasha in the finals. And I don't know if you have it there, if it's easy that you can riff off ex what I, what I said to you verbatim. Like five seconds. Yeah. Keep, what I just keep filling, when, keep filling. <laughs> well, when you said, you said, you know, we were just saying who's going to win, who's going to, um, who's going to get second, who I don't remember how we did it, but like, who's going to get on the podium. And I said, here's, here's what I think is going to happen to Stasha. And it ended up being, pretty much exactly what happened. And the whole reason is because that's exactly what we've seen happen to her in years past. Yeah. Okay. Let me read this. Uh, so you, you don't said, have to necessarily read my picks, but just what I said about Stasha. Yeah. You said I'm envisioning. So you picked Stasia as one of your possibilities for sixth place, along with Flavi Coho, which is like a completely yeah, reasonable so totally expectation, right? Right. right. I'm yeah. envisioning Stasia getting frustrated on the boulder early and it will wreck her headspace for the rest of the round as we have seen before. Of course, I'd love to be wrong. And and that's you how wrong. I come away from it, right? Like, I want to see. She's she, she's been at it so long. I know she works so hard. I'd love to see her on a podium. But we have seen this script before where she just gets so frustrated. And it's interesting because one of the things, and I think we've said it about Stasha too. I know Matt Groom has said it on commentary. One of the things that makes her so enjoyable to watch is that she does wear her emotions on her sleeve. But I think you're making a really good point about like, okay, well, where does that prove... Where does that turn to be uh, problematic? Because yeah, you look at other competitors that have been on her the circuit for as long as she have, as long as she has, they don't uh, do that in terms of their frustration, their outward frustration. Of course, everybody is going to have certain ways that they react to pressure and react to frustration. The thing with her though is we've seen her react this way, like you said, where she like, you know, hits her head and it's really like outwardly frustrated. It'd be one thing if that seems to uh, realign, refocus her, and then she ends up like whatever that um, ritual is of like getting frustrated and so. If that seemed to kind of refocus her, and then she was able to perform well on the other boulders, but that is not what we have seen in the past. When she does all the all that stuff, it doesn't seem to help, and if anything, it makes her climb uh, like just as bad or, or worse on the other boulders. So uh, it's. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I, not going to say her experience wasn't frustrating. It sucks when you can't like make yeah, the first move of a boulder and totally, tons of totally. athletes have to deal with that. Um, I think I'm just like, you know, this isn't, this isn't a young competitor anymore. And I think, I, I think she still has a lot of trouble with just managing to compose herself in between difficult burns where it's like, man, I haven't gotten off the ground and you start rushing and you start not taking the time to take a deep breath and, and try and clear, clear your head. Um, I was just so frustrated to see it before the very first boulder was over. It's like, that's, I, that's a reaction I can expect more when you're three or four boulders deep and you're just having the worst comp of your life. And like, I would probably give up at that point too. But like, again, we weren't even three minutes into your comp. It just seemed too early for that kind of stuff. So it, it would be a fascinating video uh, to just analyze, or maybe not even analyze, just highlight the different ways that competitors seem to deal with stress and frustration. Because I think the the flip side of this, of course, is someone like Natalia, who seems to just always be 
Just completely Outwardly internalize it, smiling. whatever you're feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always smiling. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I'm not making a judgment on either way. Like I said, a competitor is going to do whatever they, whatever works best for them. But it is interesting that you have kind of the polar opposites there of, um, kind of externally, um, showing your frustration in, mm -hmm. in someone like Natalia compared to someone like Stasha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this, why do we always end these shows on a bad note? Like that's like that's does it does it feel like we just leave a cloud over everything? Like especially like a somewhat it feels like we're really criticizing somebody. I'm like, man, have we been doing this show all wrong the whole time? Let's not end oh, it yet because I had okay. a couple other screen grabs that uh, I wanted to. Oh go yeah, with this you. I still don't know where you're going with this. So um, well, this you... is uh, we're gonna break down. <laughs> we're gonna break. I said in my text to you, let's break down the hug between Natal between uh, Yanya and Orion as if it was the uh, Zapruder film here, frame by frame. We're gonna get into it. I'm, so, I'm ready for it. I just want to see what you're this bringing. This all comes from the, the fact that on commentary, so the so Yanya gets done with the final boulder in the women's final. She's done climbing. The round is has been concluded. The podium has been confirmed. Yanya is off the boulder and she's starting to walk over to the mats with the other finalists, the chairs where all everyone else is sitting. And Sean McCall says on commentary about Yanya, he says, I bet she goes straight to Orion and gives her a big hug. And Matt groom on commentary. Uh, he said, yeah, I, like he kind of confirmed that, that thinking. And so it sets up this expectation for us as the viewer that it's just going to be this great effusive, moment of adulation right cue the heartwarming symphonic music with with uh yanya going over and, and embracing orion congratulating her it wasn't exactly the warm fuzzy the warm fuzzy hug that it was tell me uh, tell me when you want uh, the first picture up do you want it okay, now well, or well first of all before we even go into the frames orion was in fact not the uh the first person that yanya ran up to to hug uh yanya just kind of worked down the line in the order that everyone was seated so i think yanya hugged futaba first and then stasha was next and then miho and finally orion and all those previous you know they were just like this like you know sort of the cordial congratulatory hug and then it gets to to uh orion yanya hugging orion so pull up uh the first frame here if you will so when you tell me what do you see here with this <laughs> I can't believe you're making me break down people's hugs. But okay, so if I have to be honest, what I'm seeing is Orian giving a big, like like a full wraparound hug. Like Orian's going all out on this hug, means the world to her. Yanya's a little more timid. Yanya's going for the yeah. grade six slow dance, you know, just grabbing the sides, <laughs> trying to keep a little bit of space. Maybe you're not committed to it. Yeah, okay. So this is it, this is this is an imbalanced hug. I'll give you a, that. It is an imbalanced hug. That's a way, that's the way it's a cordial <laughs> sporting hug, but I would not call this the world's warmest congratulatory embrace right <laughs> and as we saw it ended up being very brief because uh, let's go to frame two here so this is the just the split second after the hug yanya starts to pull away and i thought it was really interesting that orion is talking to yanya trying to engage yanya in conversation as yanya is <laughs> pulling away uh and Yanya not really not really wanting to have you know much of a talk here uh which I thought was interesting let's go to frame number three this one's uh <laughs> oh, no I think this is um is this, is this number three or number four this is three this okay, is no, four no this is go back the other one yeah this is three so okay uh I think anyway uh it's blurry here but you could see Yanya is Fully pulling away, but if if it wasn't blurry here, the screen grab, you'd notice that Orion is still talking, still trying to converse. Yanya wants no part of it. Yanya is like, hey, I did the hug, I did the sporting thing. Like, I, I we're not here for we're not here for tea and, and sympathy. We're not here for tea and conversation. Uh, and then go to that last photo there, if you will. So this is Yanya. Then moves on to hug Flavi, the next competitor in line, and Orion is still still wanting to converse even as Yanya has moved on to the next competitor you can see now that Yanya is totally disengaged uh with, it was just the in and out hug with Orion I think Yanya wants to get out of this the situation of having to congratulate the winner <laughs> kind of as as quickly as possible I mean we're just kind of making making light of this the point is um it was not the warm and fuzzy embrace that 
that it was uh, expected. And John John expects I, a 360 orbit cam around two people just in a full like embrace with just tears running down each other's shoulders. I want to be clear about of uh, two things. First of all, Yanya did. She was a good sport. You know, she did the sporting thing. She gave the hug. She doesn't have to do anything else. She didn't even have to hug. So I, so we're not knocking Yanya in that sense. And of course, everybody. I mean, obviously, Yanya or Orion would want to converse. So we're not knocking Orion for that. But secondly, I kind of liked this. Like, you know, Yanya is. She's a tiger, right? She doesn't want to go and have a conversation with the person that just beat her. She she's wants to get in and get out, and then like kind of. I don't know. I think she was probably a little, I, I don't know, probably seething a little bit, maybe frustrated, maybe uh, a little upset, angry, whatever. Uh, it was good because I think sometimes when we watch these comps, it's like the competitor competitors are so overly cordial to each other and nice to each other, at least in, in public. Who knows what happens in ISO, but it's like it's, it's almost odd because you don't see this in other sports. And there is certainly a a plus side to that. I acknowledge that there's, there's a lot more good than there is bad about that perhaps, but it was nice to see this moment, a little bit of like, you know, okay. Like uh, uh, if, if even you did have to, you know, break down frame by frame, like a, a, a one second hug to find that narrative. You can tell how, how far we're digging. To right. deep, uh, yeah. That uh, big reach. How, uh, di- little, how deep we're digging to find a narrative in, the, in all of this. Hopefully people take it all with a, a little humor, a little grain of salt. We're just having some fun there. I, yeah. uh, of course, Yanya was very uh, congratulatory in her Instagram post afterwards. She said she was very happy with her performance, all that. So good for Yanya. Good for Orion. It's all good. I'll be honest. I thought I thought the uh, uh, Yanya's um, uh, afterwards post might actually be something a little bit more um, critical of the comp because I I think like you're right. Like if you come off the last boulder and you and you flash yeah flash it um, and you, and you you know you lose by what was it attempts uh, I guess mm-hmm. attempts to top yeah I can I can imagine being a little steamed maybe saying this was too easy like I I don't think any of them looked tired at the end of that competition right like well not not Yanya and Orianne at least. Um, so I thought maybe there would be a, a little bit of that, you know, she gives a little back, a bit of that criticism about the difficulty of the boulders, but there wasn't any of that. Um, I was a little bit surprised, honestly. So uh, maybe it's, you know, you got to save that criticism for when you win, right? I, th- that's and what that's, I was going to say. And part I of it's remember... to be polite, but also part of it's like, you know what? Yeah, I still won, but I still want it to be harder. It just makes you look like more of a badass when you're complaining after you dominated. But I got to give us credit. I think we actually even said that we've said this in the past when, Yanya has won and then been a little critical. We were like, okay, it's easy to criticize when you win. Um, are you going to be critical when you don't win? And and to Yanya's credit, she was not critical here. I think mm-hmm. it was a real nice post. Yeah, a little maybe a little bit surprising that she didn't mention that because uh, I, I, thought, I was certainly... Because of the two rounds, I thought she might have a little bit of something to say. But maybe you just say, you know what? It's my first time back in a while. Maybe I should just say hi to everybody and be nice once and see how things go next week kind of thing but but yeah yep yeah well said anyway you got anything else you want to wrap up is there anything about Brixen you're excited about or like again we kind of mentioned Brixen's a hard one to be pumped about given that the flaky field but i'm excited though because if people remember Brixen last year we kind of came away from that thinking it was was maybe the best comp of the year now a lot of that was because we did have that great battle between uh natalia and hannah moyle Mm -hmm. there and and um so we'll see we can get like a repeat of some some good battles on the boulders here. I, in other words, I think a lot of what made it great last year was the proceedings of the you know the rounds and stuff. And who knows if that's going to happen? But uh, it was a cool it was a cool venue, cool comp last year. Let's see if we can repeat it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you made it this far, um, make sure you leave a like, uh, leave a comment, tell us what you think about the hug. I don't know if you guys have any particular opinions or if you were just bothered that John and I spent the last like 20 minutes of the podcast criticizing women. I don't know. Maybe you can make something political out of that if you want. Um, But I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be back very soon for a a post bricks and debrief. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Of course, join the discord uh, so you can talk about Brixen and Innsbruck and all the comps to come uh, uh, with a group of like-minded people and of course if you watch i always want to thank you but a special thanks to matt t for always being a supporter of the uh of the podcast for being a supporter of climbing in general we're going to miss you a lot and uh and i thank him for uh, for everything you did for climbing so thanks very much matt and thanks again to all of you for watching we'll see you next week